Peter Edwards, Tyler Running, thank you for hosting here at Beaverton High School. It's a beautiful high school. Thanks a lot for being here. You're welcome. You're welcome. We're glad to have you. So what would you say is your biggest challenge as a teacher? Um, as, a, as a young teacher right now, my biggest challenge is probably time, um, just that there is so much to do and I want to put together the best lessons possible, um, but there is just only so much time. This is the kind of job where you could work um, all day long, you could work every weekend, and it still you know, wouldn't be exactly how you want it to be. We keep hearing about how the graduation rate is near the bottom of the barrel in the country. What do you think, from your 25 years of experience, what do you think is holding us back in Oregon? Well, I think a couple things. One, not to defend it, but every state has slightly different graduation requirements, and I, I doubt that we're really 48th. But I think the, the effort has to be made is a rather wholesale effort. Um, you know, we've got statewide, there's some students that don't come to school all the time. You know, that, we have to do something about that. You know, we have students that suffer, we have homeless students. You know, we have a number of factors beyond the school that I think um, are challenging, and, and, and some of them are uniquely more challenging in Oregon than in other places. Well, how about we take your concerns uh, right to one of the candidates, to Newt Bueller. It's in the news all the time, and it's a, it's a number one issue for a lot of people. But I think, from my perspective in Oregon over the years, that stability in funding is one of the biggest issues. Yeah. Like this year, my class size is pretty decent. I've got most of the resources I need, but it's a matter of counting when's the next trough going to be, when's yeah. the next downturn. Um, I know there's um, money that's potentially going to go back in the kicker this year, and, and we know the income tax you know, collections go, they're, they're very, um, they go up and down, they're yeah. not consistent. And so, you know, knowing that maybe f the funding levels are okay now, but knowing that they're gonna change at right. some point, and we just don't know quite when that point is, it makes it, it makes it really uncertain, and it makes me worried about, you know, gathering the next generation of good teachers and providing consistent um, service to our kids. So a lot of concern around predictability of funding. As governor, what would you do about that? Yeah. Yeah, great question, Peter. In you know, Oregon, for a long time, has had a classroom funding crisis, uh, and you touch upon one of the sources of, of the crisis is the the lack of stability in the revenue, meaning that we have these big these big peaks of revenue and then these big troughs, and it's very hard to manage almost anything when you hire up and you start programs at the good times, and then the bad times come and, and it fall, the bottom falls out. Uh, one way to equalize that or to you know to smooth out that trend line of the peaks and values is to have a rainy day fund, a rainy day fund that you can call upon when you're in the, the trough and a rainy day fund that you really put money into when you're at the peak like we are right now. And I think a great way to fill that rainy day fund up is to deviate the kicker until we get an adequate rainy day fund, estimated to be about 20% of the state budget or $4, $4 billion, and that would be well, my kicker proposal. Kicker sometimes seems sacrosanct, though. Nobody wants to talk about the kicker. Is that something you really think voters would or the legislature would approve? Absolutely. I'll just take leadership and leadership from a governor. Uh, we've certainly been talking about tax reform for a long time in, in Oregon, uh, but it's going to take a governor to really push it forward. Uh, and fortunately, the people of Oregon has shown in the past that they want to create a rainy day fund. Remember, Laurel Lake, they voted to deviate the uh, corporate uh, kicker into the rainy day fund. So we do have a little bit of a fund right now, but I think also uh, Oregonians would appreciate uh, creating a more robust rainy day fund by deviating the personal kicker or the individual kicker until we get to that 20% level. And I, I'd be willing to give that some real consideration as governor. Do you like that idea? No, I think so. I mean, because you're, you're talking about the size of a rainy day fund that really would smooth that out because you're right, the one that they have now didn't seem to make a big difference the last time yeah. when districts cut days and shed staff. And like I said, we missed a whole new generation of young teacher hires, people that were ready to go into the profession and chose other things. And we can't afford we talk about the challenges, we can't afford to lose generations of talent yeah. in the classroom. Teachers get pension benefits from the state system, called PERS. Bueller has proposed switching public employees to 401k-like plans, more like the private sector. It's a move that would especially impact newer teachers. When we read about your plan, we do hear that $1.2 billion would come from PERS reform, a lot of it. What are your concerns as a, a new teacher who doesn't have really the same benefits as, as the yeah. veteran teachers? Do you have any concerns you want to share with Newt Bueller? Um, I, I'm just curious how we can, you know, kind of similar with funding, like how we can stabilize that system. Yeah. Um, what are, you know, how are we, I mean, we know that there are some looming issues with yeah. PERS that we're going to have to pay for, and, we're, and we don't want to, 
you know, cut benefits for, for public employees have already been promised benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, how is that, how can we do that and also continue to attract people to the profession? Um, because, you know, you don't go into teaching to get rich, right. but, um, you know, you know, there's a modest uh, retirement there for you in the future. So, yeah, what are your, what are your plans there? Yeah. Uh, listen, young teachers, I feel particularly sorry for because they have the operational challenges, the daily challenges of the large class sizes, you know, the, the difficulties with our schools of being under investment and you don't have the, uh, the really uh, gold-plated retirement plan that some of the past generations do. So you, you really have, uh, have it tough right now. Uh, and I particularly want to help young teachers and I can do that by making sure that your total compensation, no matter hap what happens with PERS, remains complete competitive, but importantly also get more of those dollars into the classroom so your yeah. daily work life is much easier. Smaller class sizes, longer school year, and more resources, more professional development. And those are types of things that I think would uh, improve your daily work life and also provide a, a vision, a strategic vision uh, of making Oregon schools some of the best in the, in the nation and lead Oregon schools uh, from where they are now at the bottom. The Beaverton School District has one of the highest rates of homeless students in the state. Our teachers see how that instability affects their students. I think um, there's a, a number of challenges that are sort of even beyond the classroom in terms of, you know, numbers of students that are homeless, number of students that are, are from very challenging circumstances. And so even more broadly, state government, I think, needs to be helpful there. Because when you're dealing with graduation rates that are low, a, attendance concerns, sure. um, you know, when we have extra resources either at the schools or in other parts of state government, we need to be able to use those things to help these larger societal ills that are getting in the way of kids being successful in, in school. Yeah. And, and Peter makes a, a great point, you know, the, the need for wraparound services, uh, kids who are homeless or, or struggling at home or from disadvantaged communities, and there's a good model of that also in Oregon right now uh, at uh, the Self Enhancement Institute, which really works hand in hand at Benson High School uh, and Jefferson High School, now increasing graduation rates there uh, over 90%, uh, a remarkable transformation of those schools. It would be nice to see some um, programs come from the state, especially in regards to like absenteeism, I kind of wonder about um, what might be offered there because that that seems to be a big issue. Yeah, absolutely right. Unfortunately, again, Oregon schools have some of the highest absentee rates in the entire nation. Uh, it, it really needs to be a priority. It needs to be a priority of a governor to instill the culture within all our school districts. What can that, you do about that? that? Well, you can actually set financial incentives say, and actually uh, get best practices from the schools that have a low absentee uh, rate, like uh, Albany High School has one of the lowest in, in, this, in the state. So let's go see and learn from Albany High School and, and then bring those best practices to other, other school districts. And that really should be a, a role of a governor, of, of concentrating resources and best practices and then holding people accountable. High school teachers are measured on student test scores, but Peter Edwards says he's concerned rules allowing students to easily opt out of tests skew the overall results. My proposal was to give students uh, choice on what tests they take. Uh, listening to teachers in the Bend Lapine School and importantly students, they say, what's in it for us? You know, this smarter balance test when I'm in high school, there's nothing in it for us. Let us take the ACT or SAT because a lot of, a lot of us want to take it anyway if we have any, any aspirations of going to college. And so I had a bill that would allow uh, students to take or district to use either ACT, SAT or the smarter balance. And I think we'd have gotten a lot more student buy-in and importantly, teacher buy-in as a result. Well, and, but I also think that aside from just one high stakes test that determines whether or not you graduate, I mean, we have students that either don't take or don't pass the test, and they can graduate through showing that they have met essential skills in math and reading and, 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 um, and in, in the core areas. And, and that's a, a really important thing to do because you have teachers that are able to determine has this kid met a standard. And there are a lot of kids that wouldn't graduate if that wasn't an option. So I am, you know, yeah. A variety of tests that might help, but also having you know some ways for kids under the judgment of under the guidance and judgment of teachers to show they're ready to graduate is important. Yeah. And I think you always have to have that you know because you have to individualize it if the testing is just not appropriate for a child or if they have the other skills that can come forth with you know that type of approach. My dream for my students is that they can go on and you know. If, if they were going to stay here in Oregon, you know, they're going to be able to find jobs that they want to do. They're going to be able to go on to college if they want to go on to college. 
Um, and I just want to feel like I have that, you know, that support from the state that um, that students are, you know, we not only so support them with K-12, but K-16 or um, to go on to jobs that they want to do. Um, so that's, that's my dream for students. You know, we've heard over, I've been in Oregon 18 years, and every time there's a governor's race, you hear the candidates say, we're going to make changes in education. We're going to improve education rate, and it doesn't move the needle much. How do we know you're going to do it? Well, Oregon voters should hold their leaders accountable. And we have the situation now where test scores haven't improved over four years. Graduation rates are still third worst in the nation. We have one of the highest absentee rates. We need to hold leadership accountable, and we need a new governor to make sure we have adequate changes so Oregon schools are some of the best in the nation. Anything else you'd like to say to Tyler before we wrap it up? Thank you very much for your service, and I greatly appreciate the conversation. Thank you. Thank you.